Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today, I'm going to show you how to deal with this. Bend or warp sheet of plywood. Without further ado, let's get into it. Woods have a natural tendency to warp, and the reason behind it is because of its water content. You see, wood is a fairly complex material, and leaving the structure aside, in its inside you will always find a certain amount of water. So there will always be a small percentage of water. Now, it is because of this water, apart from the uh, temperature variation that the wood uh, expands and contract. In fact, this is uh, some of the biggest thing to take into account when actually building something with wood. You always want to have space for the wood uh, to be able to expand and contract. But this is topic for a different video. Now, uh, why in the world uh, the water will cause such a problem. And actually, it turns out that this is uh, fairly simple and also make sense. You see, uh, whenever you take a piece of wooden material, now in this case, I'm referring to a sheet of plywood. Now, uh, a sheet of plywood, it's actually a composite material composed of wood and glue. Um, so there are a multiple layer called plays of uh, wood. Uh, glued together, so there would be some glue in between, and they form a sandwich, like what you see right here. Um, so now, when there is a certain amount of water inside, um, this uh, water content will vary depending on the temperature and humidity in the air. And the different rate at which the water will evaporate from the wood will create an imbalance. And so, if you can see this uh, sheets of plywood, which is quietly deformed, uh, you will see that there is a certain curvature to it. So, now, uh, the top phase, uh, well, the phase that I'm actually showing you, has been drying faster. So, there was a different speed, the rate at which the faces, the top and the bottom faces happen to be drying at. And so because of this difference in the speed, uh, there have been an imbalance in the forces, the, in the internal forces in the material. So the top surface here, the top, this face, has been contracting quicker. And so uh, this one have resulted in this face having an higher tension than the bottom face. And so, because of the difference in tension and the thickness that you see in the material, this results in a deformation. So, you can see how it's bent. Now, the level of deformation can go even worse than this. Uh, the simplest case is you have a unidirectional deformation. So, that, that's going to be like a simple uh, curve if you, put in, if you look at the cross-section. Uh, Sometimes you have multidirectional or torsion also across the sheet, and so that is called warp. Now, this is way worse. Now, if you've been having experience working with this on a laser engraving and cutting machine, you know what, what a nightmare. Um, so, working with this sheet not only causes frustration, uh, but also it's very unsafe. Now, the frustration is because you will not get uh, your expected result. And the reason is fairly simple. Because you see, a laser mod the laser head or laser module must be at a certain fixed height relative to the material so that it's on focus. So the focus happens to be uh, where it's supposed to be. Now, when you have a material that vary in height relative to the laser module, which is fixed in this case, you are basically going to get in and out of focus in multiple spots. And so as a result, if you are engraving, you are going to get 
a line thickness that is going to vary across your uh, area. So you will go from tiny to thick and tiny again. Or if you're going to cut, you are going to have regions where the laser will successfully go through the material and region where uh, it will basically be uh, an AV engrave and not cutting. So the, it will not be able to uh, go through the material. The other thing is a safety concern. Uh, and so you can see that when you are uh, preparing your machine for cutting or engraving, you are going to position the laser height such that it's on focus, as we said. So say you are going to position it here. What happened now? If I go in this direction, the sheets will get lower relative to the laser module. But if I get in this direction, I will start touching. So this might stuck the machine. This might also drag the sheet around and might also catch on fire because of uh, the exposure to the laser. Now, you might also consider clamping this down. This is definitely something that you can do. However, if you are cutting, uh, while you are cutting, some of the elements might pop out, might stick out from the surface, uh, retaining the same curvature. And so, while you are cutting, you will end up stacking your laser module somewhere, again, getting unsafe. So, uh, working with sheets that are at this level of uh, warpness, deformation, it is not ideal. Now, you might ask yourself, how about MDF, which I would also include HDF on it. So, uh, the issue with this uh, type of material is its structure. MDF and HDF, which are medium and high density fiber respectively, uh, they are consistent material. They are composed of very fine uh, dust of wood, which has been glued uh, in shape together with high pressure and temperature. As a matter of fact, you can also find this uh, MDF uh, uh, pieces that are uh, shapes other than sheets. So now because of the actual structure, you will have a less tendency uh, to work. That doesn't mean that it doesn't work, but it's, the tendency is much less uh, because the contraction and the expansion due to the water uh, will basically be uniform across the entire volume. Now, most often uh, the instances when you will find sheets of MDF and HDF uh, deformed is either because they are laminated on one side and so uh, they will once again undergo this unbalance in the forces, in the internal forces. And second, when it hasn't been stored properly and so it is actually changing shape over time because of the, uh, let's say, permanent weight or uh, distribution of its own weight uh, wherever it's been stored. So these are the two common reasons for a deformed sheet of MDF and HDF. Now, how do we solve, how do we flatten sheets of plywood so that we can render them useful, uh, workable with the laser uh, cutting and engraving machine? And so that's what I'm going to show you now. As I said, we have a certain imbalance in the tension between the two faces, okay? And so the convex face that you see over here that is curving like this, it is the one with higher tension than the bottom face in this particular uh, sample. So now, how do we go about it? Uh, some could think that you can just put it upside down, put it somewhere, and put some weight on it. So that is not something that is going to work. It will definitely help in the long term, but you will never get a perfectly flat sheet. Okay, and so you will be waiting for nothing. So the best solution is before to actually start your engraving projects, you can just uh, like 30 minutes before, you can prepare your sheet if you happen to have sheets with this level of uh, warpness. Now, uh, 
the way to release the tension is to actually wet up again uh, the side that is with higher tension okay uh, so by wetting it up and waiting for a while to sit uh, the fiber will start expanding again and then we will need to dry and so I will show you exactly how to do that now put yourself uh, some uh, a rag or whole towel beneath so that you are not making a mess and now place the sheet on top now we are going to wet up the sheet and so to do this you can take just a little bit of water it all depends on the amount of uh, wood that you have how big it is and I'm going to pour a little bit of water just like this and to spread it with my hand And now I'm going to leave it to sit for a couple of minutes so that the surface can actually suck in a little bit of the water. All right, so after a couple of minutes, uh, the first thing to do, just get the sheet, put it on side and let the excess water come out. As you can see over here, it was quite a lot. And now you will want to put this upside down, okay? take another hold rag or a sheet this is so that you're not going to damage the bottom surface the bottom face with your iron and then you can get your iron so make sure that is already hot connected and now all you will need to do is to apply an even amount of pressure okay just to make it flat and to move across relatively slow so that the heat will spread evenly now you could actually once you wet it up uh, put it outside or somewhere where it's not going to get wet put some weight on it and to wait for it to dry so this might take one or two days uh, but again the thing is that uh, you might not end up uh, with a perfectly flat sheet and it will take more time so if you have the time you can simply do that just wet it up and leave it laying around otherwise just follow the process that I'm showing you so continue for five to ten minutes to do what I'm doing until you notice that the wood doesn't actually rise up anymore now bear in mind that you might end up warping or bending on the opposite direction so you will want to uh, pay attention to that so for now I see that it is still flexing up so the curvature is still on the same uh, direction the one thing that uh, you don't want to do is to just leave the iron like this one because obviously you might catch on fire with this uh, uh, piece of rag you might also burn the uh, face of the plywood and the other thing is also that you might apply too quickly heat which might end up splitting the the face that you are trying to uh, work out all right so after five to ten minutes you can rise up your iron and you can check whether the sheet is uh, coming up and as you can see it's not coming up so we can now double check what is going on and as you can see we are almost perfectly flat let me remove this out of the way so that we can compare it over here now there is still a little bit of deformation on it which is normal as I said you will not be able to get the perfect thing uh, but definitely much better and workable now if you're not going to use it right away bear in mind that there will still be residual water in excess in the material so uh, you might see the material warping again a little bit uh, also in the other direction so I suggest you to leave it somewhere and put some weight okay something like this 
uh, maybe you can put another sheet on top so that you are not actually uh, leaving an imprint with the weight that you apply but this is the idea so like this you make sure that the natural uh, uh, drying process will not rework uh, the material in different directions all right as you can see the process is fairly uh, quick and simple and you can do that uh, right before starting your projects so now if you have any piece of uh, warped playwood lying around you can flatten them and you will be able to work them out with your laser cutting and engraving machine I hope you found this video helpful informative uh, if you have any comment, leave them below. If you have any other suggestion on methods that could be used to achieve uh, the same uh, purpose, uh, leave them in the comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!